As more and more people start trying to convert to electric and, by extension, become aware of the problems with electric cars, stuff like range anxiety, charging times, and car weight, a lot more are looking into other green options. And one of the most promising ones is by far the option of hydrogen cell cars. How do they work? So what are hydrogen cars and how do they work? Let's find out. Fuel cell cars are basically electric vehicles powered by hydrogen and oxygen. The gases combine inside the cell to create electricity and water. And seeing as how companies like Tesla stubbornly refuse to accept that reality, the question must be asked, what's the future of electric and hydrogen cars? Is Tesla in danger? What does Elon have to say about it? The answers to all those questions will be explained during this video. But first, let's actually take a look at what exactly a hydrogen car is and what makes it different from your standard electric or petrol car. Explanation. Hydrogen cars, or as they're known by their proper name, hydrogen fuel cell cars, are sort of an awkward middle child between petrol and electric cars. But I bet you're asking, isn't that what a hybrid already is? Well, to answer that question, you must understand that while a hybrid gives you both an electric motor and a combustion engine, a battery and a fuel tank, a hydrogen car gives you only one of each, a fuel tank and a battery. And if that doesn't seem to make sense to you, you're not alone. Because let's face it, it doesn't really make sense for a motor, an electric motor no less, to run without a battery. And without an engine to burn it, what's the fuel for? Well, the key to all those questions is one word. Hydrogen. That's right, the most abundant thing in the universe, and the same thing the sun is made from, is the key to how the hydrogen car works. Let me explain. You see, the process of burning fuel is basically the fuel molecules combining with oxygen from the air and releasing pent-up energy in the process. But the fun thing about hydrogen is that under the right conditions, when hydrogen goes under the same process, it doesn't produce heat or flames, but instead creates electricity. The electricity can then be used to run a motor. Now pay attention to the special conditions part because it'll get important later. And an even more magical thing? I bet you already know that burning fuel produces a lot of harmful chemicals, chief among which is carbon dioxide, which is pretty much the biggest reason why the world is even switching to electricity. And the other thing that makes hydrogen special as a fuel is that when utilized, instead of making something harmful, it actually just makes clean water. That's right, no gas emissions, no toxic fumes, no greenhouse gases, but pure, clean, toxin-free water. And I think with that on the table, let's compare hydrogen-fueled cars with electric ones. First off, one of the most obvious downsides by switching over to hydrogen is simply where to get it. I mean, it's not like oil which can form in neatly accessible wells, or coal which can stay in the ground while you mine it. Hydrogen is a gas, and accessing it in its raw form is extremely difficult, and as a result, expensive. Now that does have a solution in the form of electrolysis, which is basically the reverse of the process used by the car. Instead of taking hydrogen and combining it with oxygen, releasing energy and making water, you take water and supply it with electricity to make raw hydrogen and oxygen. And while that sounds good on paper, that's actually the biggest problem with this system. You see, to get just 35 watts of power to the motor of a hydrogen car, you need to waste 75 watts in a million different places. By comparison, if you gave the same amount of energy to an EV, you'd get 80 watts instead of 35, making the benefit of energy efficiency pretty much non-existent. 35% efficiency, which usually averages around to 33%, isn't even compared comparable to the 80% electrical vehicles offer. Charging times and range. First and foremost, the biggest reason many people may lean toward hydrogen cars is that they offer better range and charging speeds. With the option to just go to a gas station, literally gas this time, and get your energy replenished in 6 to 8 minutes, it's really easy to see why people would gravitate more toward this as compared to waiting at a charging station for an hour for a full charge. Yes, Tesla does offer 80% charge in 30 minutes in some models, but as far as the majority of the market is concerned, charging speeds of electric vehicles are well over an hour long in most cases. And secondly, while it's a little more minor, the fact that standard EVs weigh so much can have a strong effect in a few special cases, most noticeably sports cars, which have to be as light as possible, and trucks that need every bit of payload capacity they can get, something not helped by having a massive battery strapped to their bottom. 
Besides that is the fact that the nature of all these cars is to be a lot more familiar in operation and easier to switch to when coming from gas vehicles, and just the general sense of security that whenever you're going somewhere, you don't have to check your fuel tank and plan around every charging station. Charging stations. Unfortunately for hydrogen-powered cars, the range and ease of refueling are made useless by the fact that hydrogen fueling stations are many, many times rarer than electric charging stations, so basically you'd be better off relying on charging points than hydrogen stations. There are 40,000 electrical charging stations in the US alone in comparison to only 45 hydrogen refueling stations, and by comparison, electric cars are actually getting better faster than hydrogen cars can be adopted, so all the problems with charging speed and range that are the entire reason why anyone would get a hydrogen car simply won't matter in a few years. And that brings us to the last part of our video, Tesla and the future of the automobile. So now that we have talked about all of the benefits and the potential downsides of the technology, I think it's high time we discuss the elephant in the room, Tesla. As it turns out, Elon addressed the issue a few years ago during the Automotive News World Congress. When a few reporters asked the billionaire and electric vehicle magnate what he thought of the tech, he quite eloquently called it extremely silly saying that it's very difficult just to make hydrogen and store it and use it in a car. The best case hydrogen fuel cell doesn't win against the current case batteries. So then, obviously, it doesn't make sense. And that's still a reality, because no matter how much you may improve the actual cars, the process of getting hydrogen will never get more efficient unless through a groundbreaking discovery. And all while electric cars and their problems are getting easier and easier to ignore. With technology like super fast charging, literally thousands of charging stations popping up at a lightning pace, pun intended, and battery range growing exponentially, it's not even a competition anymore. That's probably why Musk has still maintained his position since first making those statements, even tweeting back in June 2020 that fuel cells equals fool cells, with no context. And a month later, adding that hydrogen fuel cells make no sense, which, while less eloquent than before, still holds up, as the future seems much more biased towards electric technology. Now, I personally don't think that that means hydrogen cars will cease to exist. On the contrary, I think that because they're not going to make it as a direct competition for cars, they might end up focusing on more special applications. A favorite among experts is the trucking industry, because in the case of trucks, load and range are far more important factors than regular city cars, and if the hydrogen industry only has to focus on supplying one type of vehicle, then those problems can be addressed too. Whatever the case, one thing's for sure. EVs are not going anywhere. And neither is hydrogen. As Elon has confidently predicted, that will become apparent in the next few years. Years. There's no reason for us to have this debate. I've said my piece on this. It will be super obvious as time goes by. I don't know what more to say. And honestly, if EVs and hydrogen somehow manage to coexist, I think it can only be a good thing, as it will allow us to have far more options than ever in the history of cars. But for now, let's just appreciate the fact that we're living in exciting times like these. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. With that, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.